But chat, you shouldn't be going anywhere because we've got one more match coming up. I've got no time left. We need to reveal who it is. So, Crappy, I think you're going to dodge a car. Watch out for the car. Ah, James Bond going to get you. Wait, did that have the did that have the PlayStation buttons on the license plate? Let me do this again. It does. It does. L1, R1. Oh, that is special. Well, you know what? I don't even care anymore. Let's go ahead and welcome on in Seth Highwind. Seth Highwind. Oh, my gosh. I am done being a double agent. I just want to be a normal agent of chaos, a normal agent of Kuso. Hello there, Seth. Seth. Seth, are you here? Seth, Seth, Seth. Oh my gosh, where are you, Seth? Are you not talking? I'm I'm here. I'm uh, here. Discord oh, okay. did Discord did the dumb and is like, you know what? You don't need your microphone. Oh, you don't of, need that. Of course, of course. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Uh I had a lot of fun with 007 racing. That that was a surprisingly close match. I'm glad I was able to catch like the last half hour of it, and yeah, I I kinda wanna play it myself. Yeah, I'm as a Bond fan, that's like one of the few 007 games I have yet to touch, and I kind of want to play it. Yeah, I'd say that, like, I understand how janky it is, but also I kind of am interested in it. Like, I enjoyed it. Uh, with that said, you know, I'm ready for something other than 007. What do you have? Well, boy, howdy. Um, It's not Pierce Brosnan. But it is Roger Moore. <laughs> no! Because we're going to keep the no! 007 train running, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no! Why? <laughs> we're going to be going to the spy who loved me on the Commodore 64. Oh, look at him. He's Bond. He's back. He's 007. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the stream today, everybody. We have <laughs> the spy who loved me. For Commodore 64, Julo Ninja versus Triscor. What kind of game is this, by the way? Because Commodore 64, definitely a different system than a lot of people watching have played. Uh, and it definitely has some sort of different takes on genres than what uh, most modern gamers would expect. What do we have here? Honestly, this is a Spy Hunter knockoff. I don't know what that means. What Spy Hunter? So Spy Hunter is a basically like a vertical shmup game where you're in a car at all times and you're basically trying to shoot down enemies and just make it to like the end of your objectives. Oh, so uh, it so is just a car driving game. Again, we have is. two car driving games. <laughs> two car driving games with more action and more questionableness going into it. Oh, but at least baby. with this one, you're inside of a Lotus Esprit, which is awesome. Well, I mean, that was one of the cars in the previous game. It's just that it wasn't always that car. I don't think we ever saw it either. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of the rare times that Bond drives like a Lotus. So not just any Lotus, a Lotus that can turn into a submarine. So there's Ooh. awesome stuff with that as well. Uh Oh, OK, you're, you're speaking my language now. Like it's like Chitty Chitty Bing Bing, but for spies. <laughs> Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to look at this at any any Spy Hunter game again without just thinking of the word. It's chitty chitty bang bang. It's but what spies. It is. That's oh, what I'm it stealing is. That. I'm stealing that. That's great. That's gold. I love that. <laughs> is there any audio in this game? I don't hear anything. I, so there should be the 007 sting, um, and that's the only track that plays throughout the game, but it seems like we're having issues with it wanting to loop. Also, why so, is, why do I have double Triscor? What is going on here? What the crap did I do? What? What do? What? Wait, what happened? What did we? What's, nothing, what's what? Nothing. Just nothing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, let me let me go ahead and see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and poke Julo Ninja and see if we're getting if Julo hears anything. Uh, I mean, if we really wanted to get both competitors reset so we can at least get the sting. And if it doesn't come back, I think we were just planning on just putting the background tracks that normally play just so that. there's 
something. Yee, that's yeah, silence. I'm, I'm no. I'm <laughs> look. I'm typing. I'm typing. When I am typing, it is uh, your job to be loud. And then when I'm loud, it's your job to type. You know what? I can do that. Just tell me when, and I can uh, just start typing as much as I can. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I, I think they're both resetting so that we can hear the music. I do want to hear it. Uh, just don't look at all the cheats. I got to disable. Uh, that's okay. We're looking. No, no cheats. Infinite laser. I yeah. Give me lasers. Ooh. Oh baby, I like this. Yeah, I love how the game doesn't even have like a proper title screen. It just jump jumps you straight into the game with an arbitrary score of 38. Huh. Well. Yeah. Okay. Both of them are good to go. So we're going to do the countdown. Everybody, spam all of your best emotes, all of your best car emotes. Uh, what else? What else would be appropriate? Because we're going to start the timer like really soon. Bubsy is not in 007. Is there anything that like makes smoke effects or something like that? The cool to stuff, go with, like, you like know, the bombs smoke and smokes and uh, bombs and smokes. What does that even mean? This yeah. music was cool for a second, but no. What you're? What you? you I mean, come on, just bask in the gloriness that is crunchy 007. It's not quite the right tune, and it's definitely not the right rhythm. Okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> how are we judging this match? So, this match is going to be mostly judged predominantly on distance. Um, whoever makes it the most progress is, will be overall winner. Um, with this being a arcade-style C64 game, there is always the chance that both competitors might, keyword might, be finishing the game. Okay. Um, if they're able to do that, we'll go it based on final score once they hit the the uh, like the final screen of the game. Okay, are they aware of that? Yes. Perfect. I have done my due diligence, crossed my T's, and dotted the lowercase J's. Okay, I'll just ask you to go pin those messages so that it's very easy for them yep. to access. Uh, otherwise, I am excited to see how this goes. Uh, oh my goodness. I, I love that, like, you can tell those are trees from above, but honestly, they're just circles with a smaller circle inside, and they make me think of things other than trees. It's a circle within a circle, and it just... Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what the things on the absolute side are supposed to be, if it's just, like, a sheer cliff like rocks. wall, or... It's like you're driving through a canyon, I right? presume. Yeah. Cool. Uh, pinned uh, scoring metric. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, what is this game about? Oh, it looks like we've got boats. I see boats. Whee! Yep. Uh oh. So. <laughs> so, with this taking place, but the spy will love me, this is predominantly going to be after uh i need to remember i don't remember the uh the female lead's name uh but basically both spawned and the kgb agent decided to work together um they go undercover and, and basically figure out the main villain's evil plan is basically hijacking both u.s and russian nuclear submarines to fire nukes at each other and to basically cause a bionuclear war across the world that's not so good. they're now on their way in uh, after visiting Strongberg's base to figure out where exactly they can either like hijack a boat or find a way to board Atlantis, which is like Strongberg's hideout. Just go rent so, one. Yeah. So that's kind of like where we are at the moment. Just trying to make our way to the main base. Okay, gotcha. Do you need to kill this uh, enemy boat? Oh, there we go. Julo Ninja managed to kill it. 
So yeah, you can only kill them with the missiles and the missiles share the same weapon action as your smoke screen, which the smoke screen is usually just as a hindrance. It doesn't really do damage, nor are you able to drive the boats or even other cars off the stage. It's like they know how to fly and can just hover over the terrain when they want to. Oh, perfect. That means their boat's better than your boat car. So you you do have a limited number of lives. It's shown at the bottom left. How long is the stage? Does it last infinitely or? It does have an ending point. Um, okay. There will be a point where you drive through what looks like a tunnel system and then your car just explodes at the very end, but it counts as a win. Gotcha. Oh, Triscor running into the bridge. Don't want to do that. Now, one thing that I'm actually thinking, if we are going to have, like, if, if the players do beat the game and are going for a high score at that point, uh, one thing to keep note of is, uh, are there sections where you get more score? If so, it may be worth dying towards the end of those sections and repeating them in order for you to rack up more points. Uh, I, so, I'm just thinking a little bit of the meta game for actually getting yeah. a high score at the end here. So as it stands, you are scored per distance. So the farther you travel, your score does incrementally go up. You also do, do get bonus points for defeating your enemies, collecting the random Mario coins that are scattered throughout the stages. Um, every little thing will add up in the end. So if they're prioritizing score, they do want to try to defeat as many enemies as possible caveat to that though is once you run out of missiles you do not have the ability to defeat enemies because you only have ammunition for the initial bout of transforming from a car into a boat okay gotcha you uh, also get heavily penalized if you murder pedestrians who are either just swimming in this lake Triscor. or <laughs> Triscor just minding their own business could not avoid the bridge that's one thing that, like, is really bothering me about this game. There's some decisions that, like, you're just going to have to memorize later on, whether you need to go right or left, yeah. and uh, there's no way to know until, boom, you die. So the only real way for you to move, like, left or right, you have to go diagonal uh, left or diagonal right to really get that movement. If your boat, or mainly the boat, if the boat slows down too much, you do not get that momentum to make the turn and you're forced to drive into the dock to kill yourself. Yeah, that's a it's little annoying. It's Commodore 64 things, whatever. You're not meant to play this game for more than five minutes before having to start over. Uh, in general, Commodore 64 games were relatively short. Uh, and because of that, you know, you're, you're, they up the difficulty so that, oh no, Triscor just ran over a swimmer, minus 50 points. But you get 50 points so fast, like 50 points is hardly a punishment slap on the wrist. Yeah, yeah. another thing that's not really being con well conveyed by watching it is both the boat and the car control like you put soap on the wheels or just underneath the boat in general. Like, it's a very slippery handling control once you make it to top speed. Okay, Jilla Ninja got the message well done. Is this the, is this a second level? This is the second part of the first stage. It looks the same. It did, yes it does, but uh, now we've got motorcycles and eventually we'll have a semi-trailer pop up out of nowhere that Feels like it belongs into a license to kill game instead of Spy Who Loved Me, but uh, semantics. So wait, 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 wait. Are there other levels then? Yes. Okay. I I was wondering if we had seen the entire game already. No, 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 no. There are there are multiple like there are multiple levels. I'm glad that like when you drive over the water, it just I'm kind of splashes a little bit. Like, while, while you're doing your car stuff, not not while you're a boat. It doesn't really splash while you're a boat. Uh, both players, though, are really, like, doing pretty well learning the basics of the game. In general, your first time playing through a game on Cusa Grande or your first set of continues, uh, especially when it comes to older games, you can expect 
to start over a few times. So really just gather the knowledge that you need so that on your second and third attempt, you're able to do better. You want to do better in the future. Uh, and so it's fine to risk things early on. It's fine to do things that might seem dumb. We might make fun of you on stream, but if it gains, if you manage to find some secret scoring system, that then that ends up being completely fine and will be the fools for laughing. We're the fools anyway. That's just our life here. <laughs> I say, are we, are we always the fool in these situations? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People in and... chat are asking, how do you, uh, isn't that how you park a boat? Uh, in reference to driving it into the end and blowing it up. And as it turns out, in James Bond world, yes, that's how you park a boat. Have you ever seen I mean, a James that... Bond vi film? That's what he does. I mean, to be fair, a lot of the boats in James Bond's possession do tend to blow up when he's done with them. Yeah, so, pretty you know, much it's every vehicle he drives. I, I, <laughs> it's a long lasting joke. Like in James Bond, he will destroy the vehicle. And. You know, they're always going to yell at him about that. They're like, come on, why did you do it again? And he's like, James Bond things, lol. <laughs> they also oh, find some no. pretty brutal way to destroy a lot of the cars in the series. Like, especially the uh, the BMW Z4 and, uh, uh, oh, come on. Uh, World is not enough where it gets, like, chopped in two by the logging company saws. Yeah. I think I remember that. If that's the one that also came out on uh, the N64, the, the video game, yes. uh, then yeah, for sure. And that's the one that ends with the line, this year, or... Yeah, this year Christmas is, uh, Christmas is in July. No, Christmas is coming twice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 that's it. That's the movie. But this year Christmas is coming twice. Oh, guess what the main girl's name is in the movie. I bet you can't guess, chat. I bet you can't guess what the girl's name is. I was watching that, like, with Justin. I don't know if he was, like, actively watching it too much, but, uh, yeah, he definitely heard that line and, like, looked up and, like, <laughs> blinked. He's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of good lines like that throughout the entire series. Um, like, I know the one that comes to mind for me is, like, at the end of Moonraker, when they're, when Bond and, um, I never remember her name, um, they're coming back down from the space station, and they're doing stuff. All that, like, the Pentagon can see is, like, the infrared imaging, and they're, like, all disgusted by what's going on, and... There's like, good lord, what's Bond doing? And Q being oblivious to everything just goes, I think they call it re-entry, sir. No! No! No, no, you can't say that! Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, here's the deal. They, like... They, they really toe the line a little bit with PG, PG-13, and I can appreciate that. Uh, honestly... Well, PG, PG-13, R, you know, and uh, considering that they're more, you know, they're, they're going to be kids watching it, you know, they, they make sure that any of the big adult punchlines can be, uh, have at least a little, like, you have to, you know. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, you're probably a child, and that's fine. And luckily, it's dumbed down enough that it, like, or not dumbed down enough. It, kids won't understand it, and they won't mistakenly think it's funny and repeat it to everybody. Because you know, you know. Oh that... yeah, like 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 once a kid hears something, it's just it's it's like a parrot. They don't say it until like they stop. Yeah, and then like if they say that, and people try to stop the kid from saying it again then the kid is going to say it more and more. And so, like, if, if, if a child runs out to an adult uh, and says, ah, Christmas is coming twice this year, uh, the adult's not going to, like, unless they've seen the movie, the adult's going to be like, 
what the crap are you talking about? That's not funny. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, and then the kid's not going to say it again. See? That's how you metagame children who like to repeat every funny thing they hear. <laughs> Tristan, I'm not going to explain the joke. If you know, you know. <laughs> and if you're not, you're probably a child. Huh? You're it's a child? It's a time and place for everything, and this is definitely not that time. This is time for Kuso. <laughs> oh, no, Triscor! Triscor did not explode this time. Huh? And Triscor actually knows how to park a boat. I'm fine with it exploding. <laughs> It's just like in Animaniacs when they were talking about fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Great, great moment. Great moment. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I definitely, like, I remember seeing that as a kid, and I absolutely did not understand it. But it is absolutely, absolutely considering that she pulls Prince out. It absolutely, 100%, without a doubt, is not okay. <laughs> and yet, and yet, it is really funny. <laughs> now I sort of understand when adults were like, I don't want you watching that show anymore. I'm like, I kind of understand, you know? Ah, oh, come on. Come on, it's a funny cartoon for kids. I don't think I want you watching that show. Oh, come on. Come on. She's like, no, no, I saw the episode. No, I can't. I, I get it. I finally get it. Like, uh, for Ren and Stimpy, I understand why my parents didn't want us watching it. Honestly, I don't think I wanted to watch it even when I was a kid. It was weird. Uh... But like Animaniacs, I, I fully understand you parents. But come on, your kids didn't understand that joke either. Just, just, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it, and like, especially going back and like looking at like some Ren and Steppy stuff, like you sit there and it's like, wow, how did, how did this like get on like Nickelodeon of all channels? Yeah, it, it really pushed the line for what was acceptable and what wasn't. And I, I appreciate media that does that. And honestly, like, for for kids, I think kids can handle some things a little bit more than, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You don't have to just be watching VeggieTales all your life. You know, no, have, I think put a little Gravity Falls in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think it boils down to, like, sometimes, like, to score the kids can enjoy Yes, so the truck is actually a queue shop. So all of the oh. coins they've been collecting, they can now purchase like more ammunition, more armor. They can basically assist what they need uh, to kind of help mitigate like anything they've used during like the boating section, um, which is why collecting the Mario coins is very important, not only for your score, but also for the queue truck if you manage to go inside of it. I want you to know, by the way, like Triscor, when finishing level one, has had like double the score that Julo Ninja has had and that oh my gosh you know what I realized why everything was wrong why the names didn't look right it's because I used the wrong layout oh oh because it's supposed to be the losers bracket layout these are the one of the players is going to get eliminated because of this game yeah that makes me feel so I don't know what to no 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 not like this. You feel not perfect. Like this. You feel glorious. <laughs> Somebody says that Okami mentioned that 15 minutes ago. If it's an important thing, you can always add an at at Brosentia. Hey nerd, why the crap do you have it the wrong color? Gosh. Uh, but yeah, every everything's fixed now, and you don't need to worry, chat. It's fine. Uh, yeah, we are this far in. This is a no compassion stream. Yeah, I'm calling everybody <laughs> nerds at this point. I'm sorry. I speak love. Tempestrol, you can't just at me and call me a nerd jerk. Wow. Do you see how this is, Seth Highwind? I tell them 
You can only do that if I messed up. Huh? Huh? I can see. I, I can see the abuse going on. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's no compassion night for a reason. We're tormenting bro and others with like back to back bond stuff. Compassion's allowed to go out the window. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, we are 18 minutes into this match. Chat is hazing me, and this is about what I would expect from Cusa Grande today. Yeah, just welcome to my life. Aren't you glad we got like the music back up and running? I am so glad. <laughs> like, the thing is, you said, nah, it, the music's just going to stop after a while. I'm like, okay, then I can go ahead and play music after that. But no, it loops, sort of. Well, I mean... It, I, I knew it looped. That's why I was really, really concerned and confused when Joel, when Ninja was just like, oh, it's not looping. I'm like, excuse me? I mean, yay, but no. So I'm looking at the company that developed this. It was published by Domark, but I'm seeing that it was developed by the Kremlin? I... Excuse I me? I missed that part. <laughs> I missed that part. What? <laughs> That's what I'm what? seeing by the Kremlin, not not Gremlin, the Kremlin, which tends to be the subject of a lot. <laughs> yeah, this might be KGB propaganda here. Oh my gosh! Wait, wait, wait! Don't mark software. Uh, found uh, software based in the United Kingdom, founded circa 1984. Name was arrived from the given names of its founder, Dominic Wheatley and Mark Strachan. Okay. Yeah, okay, um, that was the name of one of their internal dev teams. Fine, whatever. I still like that the Kremlin worked on a Bond game. Um, fun fact. Yeah. Uh, da -da 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 -da. They were associated with the James Bond franchise from 85 to 93 before they merged in 1986 with Eidos Technologies. Um, oh, that makes sense. Okay. and Big Red Software to form Eidos Interactive. Gotcha. Another fun fact, Matt Furness made this music. Uh, yeah, this absolute jam that you're hearing right now. Uh, Matt Furness, the person who made all of the best music ever. Like uh, Battletoads for Sega Master System or uh, Mortal Kombat 2... Uh, uh, Boogerman, Pitfall, The Mayan Adventure, The Lion King, Arabian Nights for Amiga, uh, Cool Spot, various Robocop games, uh, Zool. Yeah, uh, every game. Basically, uh, Marble Madness. We've had Matt Furness show up multiple times, and honestly, it's rare that you have a European retro stream and not have Matt Furnish show up somewhere because uh, he, he was the genius. He was the genius of the time for European video games when it came to music. And honestly, this music's a bop. Uh, apparently, this was also co-developed by the Hit Squad, which was the budget label of Ocean. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, I, I love that Color Dreams had a budget label. Uh... And that, like, that label was really, really bad. They're like, we have games that are too bad for Color Dreams, so we put them un under this other name. I'm so glad Ocean had that as well. <laughs> so good. So, you know, they were... Uh, Hit Squad was known for <laughs> the Game Boy, NES, and Commodore 64 versions of Hook. Oh, uh, yeah. Dune 2, Building of a Dynasty on DOS. I don't know anything about that one. Uh, I think that was the second, like, Dune RTS style game. Okay. Back in, like, 92. Uh, Syndicate on DOS as well. Okay. Lethal Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not great. Uh, I, I... Hudson Hawk, baby! Oh, no. Go. <laughs> I do see one of the main people who worked on this. I, uh, there were like three people credited. Matt Furness did the music. Uh, and then the other two people, one of them worked on, what do I see here? Sonic 3D Blast. 
specifically the utility programming for that. Mm, and also, M&M's Blast, absolutely unrelated, but both have the word blast in them, so that's pretty cool. Oh, how about Thunder Jaws? We've had that on Cusa Grande. Little Puffin Dragon Land. I, that has to be Puff the Magic Dragon, right? Has to be. Has to be. Oh, this is hideous. This is like the scariest dragon I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I need to share it with y'all. Oh, please do. Freaking please little do. Puff. Do -do, do -do -do. Do -do -do. Yeah, look, just looking at the scores, like Triscor, I believe, is in the lead anyway, but also Triscor is just so good at racking up points. That's what's really impressive to me. Here's Little Puff. Oh, 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 no. Horrifying. No, 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 no. You all want a little puff, huh? This is what this is what a little puff does to you. Little puff looks like it's infected with chicken pox. Little no. puff goes to see a doctor immediately. Go. My gosh. <laughs> also going to ignore the um, um the really really bad stereotype in the background as well. <laughs> oh man. Wait, no. what? Do I want to put it back up? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a little scary. Yeah. yeah, welcome to the 80s and 90s, everybody, <laughs> where uh, racism was par for the course. Oh, no. Oof. That's a big oof. <laughs> oh. With that said, we are here, as I said during the last game, you know, we often have games that are good memories, but end up having problematic features. We don't censor those problematic features, but we will certainly mention them. Uh, and yeah, uh, mention it, I will. That's why I'm kind of happy that with the um, the re-release of the Battle Network collection, Capcom put a little warning before the game even boots up, like acknowledging, like, just letting you know, these games were made, you know, in the mid-2000s where some things were still appropriate. That's not the case now. We're sorry. Oh, Cam Capcom put a message up like that? That's really cool of them. Mm -hmm. Capcom, I know how do you, like, you, you somehow managed... Like, for a while, we were like, you killed Mega Man, but now they've, like, done so much to, like, celebrate fans and to, like, bring back things that people have loved. I really appreciate what Capcom has done, and, uh, honestly, I highly respect a company that's willing to say, uh, what was in this, you know, is problematic now, and we acknowledge that, uh, but we are not going to change it. With that said... I want an edited version of Mother 3 out that changes the bullcrap in it because it was never released in the U.S. Nobody has quote-unquote fond memories of the game. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Huh? Huh? You want to mm -hmm. do that? <laughs> Just change 50% of the story and it's fine. But, oh, like, I, I actually, like, I think that's one of the cases. The more that I've learned, the more I understand why it uh, is not going to come out. But the more that I think uh, that it's a case of this is actually appropriate for you to go ahead and change quite considerably. Why is Julo Ninja just going really slow behind the semi? I don't think Julo has realized that they can go into the semi. They might, they might believe it's a giant enemy that they can destroy. You might be right. Because uh, I was not able to find, like, any type of instruction manual for this. The most I could give these people, the, the competitors today, was the controls and the score lowdown. Yeah, Triscor has done a surprisingly good job at, like, figuring out that you can go in there. You can buy various items. Uh, that's the Q truck. Julo Ninja is trying to murder Q, which, honestly, Bond probably wanted to do a few times. Let's say, especially after the uh, the last game? Yeah, no, absolutely. Come on, you, you're going to ruin the paint job, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I can't believe that uh, we have a flat tire on all four of the tires, Mr. Bond. You've gotten the lightest scratch. That's gonna come out of your deductible, Mr. Bond. I am going to issue a fine. 
not a fine job, a fine you'll give us money, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Look, I have to, I have to. Like, John Cleese, he can be full of witticisms. I'll be the opposite. Oh my gosh, Jill and Ninja got in. I guess. Yep, finally. Woo! I mean, I, they were also, they've also been sitting on like a hundred and something coins, so they can just shop for days if they want to. Yeah. And honestly, considering that you get points for killing enemies, that's probably a good idea. The thing is, we're almost half an hour into this match and like, I don't know if we're anywhere near a uh, game completion for either of the players. No, so after this stage, they then go into like a dedicated shmup section in the Lotus submarine module uh, okay. where they're actively fighting the Atlantis troops before taking down Atlantis itself. And then there's another water shmup section where you're taking out boats and a, I want to say like a destroyer. And once you're done with that mission, the game will then loop back to the beginning of level one. Yeah, gotcha. I'm really, like, I'm trying to figure out what uh, Julo Ninja's strategy is here because I'm not sure what Julo's doing. I think Julo's is trying to take it nice and easy because one of the downsides of the game to really get any speed, you really have to plaster yourself up on the upper screen, um, which unfortunately may you may be going fast, but you could also run into the ramps. And if you run off a ramp and don't stick the landing, you blow up. Okay. Uh, we've already seen it with the the water sections. If you move too fast, you might accidentally run into the dock or not know which way you should go when the junction eventually splits. So taking it slow and methodical is a valid strategy for survivability. Yeah. But the slower you go, you're also opening yourself up for attacks from the vehicle cars because they do match your speed, which is nice. However, they can just wail on you if you're not set up right. Yeah, honestly, I can see this strategy. Now that you mentioned that, I can see this strategy working against uh, other players. However, Triscor is destroying this game. Like, let, let's be real, Triscor, uh, with the score that he currently has, you know, uh, th this is telling me that Triscor has made a lot of progress through the stage and is honestly probably going to get close to the end and beat the game. Of course, there's no way for Jillo Ninja to know how far Triscor has made it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, like, I, again, I, I think that this meta strategy of going slow uh, would, in other cases, be extremely useful and possibly be a game deciding choice uh, or a match deciding choice. No, Julo Ninja <laughs> can't do anything. Got to go for it. No, you just got to you, you just got to eat it. <laughs> well done. Wait, it said well done. What? Oh. What? OK, so. Uh, they're now winning. <laughs> <laughs> they made it to the next stage. Excuse me? This was how you get to the next stage? Yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> Cause Are you sure this the is movie, the next stage? No, this this is this is the next stage. This is this is the next stage. They they're they're now going up against everything. So they now need to basically make their way to Atlantis and destroy Atlantis. And the thing that, re that, that it's, <laughs> you need, the truth of the matter, you need movie knowledge to know about this because this is actually how Bond <laughs> escapes from the hitman by driving the car off of a dock and going into the sea. Okay, like, but Julo Ninja didn't mean to go that direction. With that said, you know, uh, when it comes to Cusa Grande, everybody, uh, having a wide variety or wide knowledge of various media may be surprisingly useful at times, but also luck is definitely an element. And sometimes you do find yourself up against a wall or an ocean, so, so to say. 
uh, and yeah, find out, so... like, in Castlevania 2, that you just gotta crouch for a little while. With so, yeah, the right uh, ring equipped, but... Prison is right. There is a submarine module you need to buy from Q in order for you to go into the water. So this stage will continue to loop until that module is bought. Okay, gotcha. So the big question is, uh, maybe Triscor uh, has avoided buying the module just so that, you know, he could get a few loops. Like, we're going to have some good discussions after this to see, like, what are y'all thinking about this game? Like... Do you have any idea what you were doing in order to make progress? Because my theory is, I have no idea. I have no idea. Triscor, like, you have enough money. I think you can buy the sub-module, right? Well, I mean, if you can get in the, in the truck. But all of the enemies are just playing severe defense here. Like, we don't want you to go in the truck. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking there are some other games that uh, there looked like there was deadly water, like Aliens, Alien 2 for the MSX, as well as the Famicom Disk System. That has a specific play. Guess what? I'm speedrunning that this week at FWA. Uh, and that has a section where it looks like if you jump, you're going to die, but it's not actually a death pit. It just looks like one because there's a layer of water on top of the floor that you need to jump on. Oh, yeah, I actually saw that. That's uh, blown up. That, that that's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. I was not able to make it out to FWA this year, but I'll definitely be catching stuff when I get it when I get a chance to. Good, good. Everybody should watch. Okay, if you're watching Kusa Grande and you don't watch my run, I will cry for every single one tear for everyone who's watching who doesn't watch my run. It's on at like. What is it? About 3.30 p.m. Eastern, something like that. Okay, you might be at work. Fine. I won't cry if you're busy working or something like that. If you have a life, that's fine. But if you don't have a life and you don't watch my run, then I'm going to be very disappointed, and I will know because uh, ESP, something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, what Triscorp needs to do is that last option in the queue shop is the submarine option, so they, they need to actively purchase that to move on. I love it. Isn't that dumb? <laughs> but at the same time, like, Triscor has gotten an extra life here, uh, and honestly, I think that it's... Is it score-based that you get extra lives? Something it like is. every 100,000 points, you get an extra life. Yeah, something around those lines. So, like, Triscor has just been racking up lives, which has been great, which means they can take as many attempts as they need to. So once they figure out the the submarine, they'll be good to go for the entire water section. Yeah, Jillo Ninja's honestly going to have a little bit more of a rough going here just due to all the damage that Jillo Ninja is taking. Like, unfortunately, I really don't have a good way to... How can you see how much health they have? So in terms of the characters under weapon systems, the far left under DAM is damage, and that will indicate how many hits until your vehicle blows up. Okay, so uh, essentially full health at this point. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and a laser. Oh, lasering all of the sub, or all of the scuba divers at the same time. I love it. Triscor, are you gonna buy the sub module yet? I think so. We've there got we the go. sub capability. Triscor is going to be going into the water. I think Triscor has noticed that the game has just been looping over and over and thus uh, is like, what do I even do? How do I get out of this endless loop of pain? So what they'll need to do now is they'll need to take that fork in the road before it goes into um, the bridge section and then just, you know, just like uh, Jolo did, just dive right into the water. Just go into the water. There's only one place you can really go into the water in this level. Uh, you are... It should be pretty obvious. You buy a sub-module. Where is there water? There's water to the left. To the left? Yeah. There we go. This is it. Y'all, Otriscor, we splush into the water. <laughs> We've got, got the sub-module. Well done. Get ready. Time to swim. Uh, 
Yeah, I'd say that like this game actually does have enough solid information to point you into in, in the correct direction. Honestly, like I'm not convinced this is necessarily a like a terrible game. It probably hasn't aged well, but I would have had a lot of fun with this back when I was a kid. I've never really experimented anything with Commodore 64 stuff, let alone like I guess quote unquote vintage PC gaming outside of a handful of DOS games here and there. Um, so I've never really had like that experience of like picking up like a, a tape based game or even like an old floppy game and just going to town on it. I've, I've always been mostly a console gamer outside of the handful <laughs> of Sierra and Lucas I like this. One that allows you to shoot backwards. That way you can just get behind the the giant machines and shoot backwards with your car that was ridiculous yeah uh i i don't expect like a lot of people participating in the tournament to have played very many commodore 64 games it, it's something from my child well okay c64 wasn't but atari games were and a lot of atari games ended up being on c64 as well they shared a lot of like the popular titles so, like, I, I would say that uh, this is at least better than the last V8, okay, uh, as far as car games go. And, but then again, the last V8 is really, 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 really a pain. Uh, but there are a lot of classics from the Atari and Commodore 64 era that are quasi unplayable by today's standards. It's just that video games improved so much when the NES came out, uh, when it was a dedicated system specifically for video games. That made a huge, huge, huge difference. I mean, I guess Atari was as well, but Atari Home Computers later became the mainstay for a while. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, with that said, I'd say that like what was good back then is often basically trash today. You know, looking back at it now, the first C64 game I actually played was the uh, the He-Man game I got as like, I think the second, yeah, the, the second game I got as an actual competitor in Kuso was the first time I touched um, Commodore 64. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Triscor is really trying to figure out this uh, boss's pattern and like, it's not too complicated. It does a small circle, does a jab, and then big circle where you really do not want to be lined up with it. Okay, one more hit and Triscor is dead. Just got to make sure that you uh, do not get hit during this main circle phase. Okay, the lasers have stopped temporarily, so you want to line back up and hopefully uh, deal a hefty amount of damage before this phase right here. I would not go back in during this laser phase, though. Ooh, that was a very, very close... Like, that, that was a good dodge by Triscor. I did not expect Triscor to live. What I, yeah, I thought Triscor was done for. Okay, Ooh. Triscor has zero health left. What? Any hit. That's it. Any hit, you're done. Oh my gosh. What the crap is? How do you dodge? How do you dodge like this? This is not... Oh my this is impossible. Goodness. How much health does this boss have? A lot. Okay. <laughs> and it's the halfway boss of the stage, too. <laughs> this is the halfway boss? Yeah. Well, there goes Triscor. So essentially, this match is tied so far. Both players have made it to this boss, but neither have killed it. I do not know who has dealt more damage because as far as I can tell, it's not visible. Uh, this is something that uh, does matter in the grand scheme of things. Uh, if in nobody of... is able to kill this boss, that may end up being a tie for the players. And Jill Ninja yeah, got there first. Yeah, Jill Ninja did get there first, but in terms of like damage goes, I know Triscorp has spent longer on the boss. Yep. Do 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 do. -do. Triscorp really playing risky. Don't need to play risky. Like honestly, taking a lot of damage on that boss. That's not gonna help too much. However, uh, Triscor now has eight 
or nine direction shot it looks like this actually matters quite a bit like getting these shot upgrades that way you can actually dodge the shots while fighting the various bosses here oh geez but but triscor uh triscor has the lives to experiment i i think that that's a fine decision like let's go ahead and play a little bit risky just see what we can do with these lives and hopefully be able to learn how to play this game well enough to kill that stupid giant boss coming up yeah that's like that, that's the nice advantage with you know going into the the subsection with six lives is you can experiment you yes. can you know sit there and try to figure out all right cool what works what doesn't work how do the you know how does things like the the weapon upgrade system for this you know actively work what's going to be effective what isn't effective with the lives to burn you will be able to like figure things out and hopefully you know continue that progress and defeat the mid boss yeah by the way uh, as a quick reminder you can see the health based on th the number of bullets above damage D-A-M, damn. That means damn is your health, okay? It's your damn health. <laughs> uh, next to that is air, which apparently doesn't matter underwater. We have no air, but it's fine. We've got a scuba module. Next to that is missile. If you have that, you have an upgraded shot. And next to that is snake. I don't know what that does. And then finally laser. If you've got a laser, that is full. Do you know what snake is? Or is it snake? I'm actively trying to look that up. Snack? <laughs> Maybe it's actually SHK shark. Shark. Ooh, so you fire sharks from your. Oh, that's probably smoke. Oh, smoke. Ugh. Smoke. That would. Okay, chat. Yeah, we have seen the smoke <laughs> screen before. It's smoke. I wish it's... it was shark. But I wish smoke. it was shark too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now pay attention, 007. I've installed the shark launcher on your Lotus today. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me, a what twin. now? <laughs> the shark launcher. It launches two miniature great white sharks out of the front cub haps here and here. Guaranteed for a good meal for any would-be scuba diver in the seas. Okay, just, just clarify, you said a shark? Not like a missile launcher, a shark launcher. <laughs> I don't see that being too practical since this is a car that drives on land. Oh, we are... <laughs> oh, man. Now that you see, this is a sea mission. This is a sea mission, 007. Yep, then why did you give me a car? Well, we installed a scuba module on your car. Well, why didn't you just give me a boat? You wouldn't have to install a scuba module on my freaking boat now, would ya? No. <sighs> Stupid. Like, here it is. Q, the British government just deciding let's overcomplicate things and give you a car for a sea mission. With that said, Triscor has moved into the lead, defeating what you said is the mid boss and moving on. Very nice lead change right there. Triscor has a laser. Is it going to be another of the same boss? Oh, it's two of. Nope, not two he of them. He is now fighting Atlantis itself. This is the main base of the big bad of the film. This is a base. It's a very yep. small base. But then again, it's underwater. Honestly, building a big base takes a lot of money. <laughs> like, even on land. So, uh, you know, keep it small and simple. We Put two guns there a, on there, the front, some... you know? There were some budget cuts when we were designing this boss, so we kind of, you know, need to shrink it down to size. <laughs> well, you know, if you stay under the water too long, you might get some shrinkage. Happened to George Costanza. It happens to everybody. <laughs> and there we go. Triscor is out of the water. Wait, JK, still in the water, just not under the water. Now in boat form. Rather than car with sub module, we are a boat. This is and Triscor is officially on the last stage. Very, very nice. I, 
I yeah, still haven't gotten needs tired to do of the music, is... by the way. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think we could listen to this fucking, you know. Mm. Man, just imagine this on like an endurance route. Two hours of this. Oh, yeah. And go for the best score. <laughs> See how many loops it takes you. Uh, <laughs> uh, that show, James. Bad show, James. Uh, uh, uh. Naughty, naughty show, James. Oh, uh, you're so naughty. <laughs> My name is Q, and you've been a naughty little agent, haven't you? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Q! How dare you! I mean, oh, blonde! How dare you look at me like that! <laughs> oh, don't you know? I I get very upset when people look at me that way. Think of the kid. Chad, I know that you're calling me weird. I've been listening to this music for like 50 minutes straight now. I am losing my mind. <laughs> My double oh seven, you naughty boy. <laughs> this year, Christmas comes twice, and so does Q. <laughs> what does that mean, Mom? Shut up! Shut up! Stop asking me these questions. We told you not to watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. This is what happens. I'm, we're losing our freaking mind because this music is so good, but not like an hour of it. Like you, you lose your brain sails. Brain so sails. They happens. break out of the sail. You, you hear the same thing over and over again, and you decide, you know what? This sounds like a great time to kill my coke. <laughs> hey, James Bond. I'm coming out of my cage, and I'm feeling just fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Oh. Ah. <laughs> it started out as a kiss. How did it end up like this? <laughs> oh. That's it. If I don't show up for another Kusa, it's because I'm dead. <laughs> and it's gross. I love that the truck just showed up like running Jula Ninja over and then it's like, come on, come in, come on. Hey, come on, Bond, I've got your tools right here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, nobody at me. Nobody at me about any of this, okay? What happened in Kuso today? It will it'll remain our secret. <laughs> We've, uh, had a, we've had a wonderful time, haven't we, everybody? I'm crying. I'm crying from laughter and pain. Somebody help me! Do you need first aid? <laughs> <laughs> what happens in good Go. mistakes? Pretty much. Yeah, that... that Pretty that, much. Uh, today, at least. You know, you know. Well, a Triscor is fighting a boat with another boat. This isn't the way boats are meant to move, but whatever. It's like, just some boat-on-boat -boat action. <laughs> no. If, how does a boot, a boot, how does a boot move sideways like this? <laughs> if, no, stop it! Ah, I'm here double. <laughs> Okay. I'm here to double! <laughs> Nova Sol is saying that uh, he expected Blombie Car to break me, not this. Blombie Car also broke me, but also I put the title to a cat song. I have a Blombie Car in mind. His, I don't know what his name is, just Blombie Car. <laughs> 
He sits and sits and sits and sits, and that's what makes a blombie car. Yes, <laughs> blombie car. <gasps> Mr. Bond, we have developed the blombie car. <laughs> Well, what does it do? Mm. Not blobbies! <laughs> we need a new Q! We need a new Q now! Uh, yeah, honestly, if Q was like that, they, they would definitely fire them, like, really quickly. <laughs> He's a blob, blob. blumbler. Oh my gosh, Shrambles, you just hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ooh, Mr. Bond! <laughs> How about you take me in your little rambler? Mm. We need more silly sounding cars these days. Instead, it's like Ford Focus. Oh, that's so boring, huh? How about, uh. I don't know. I don't know what it. Yeah, that's. That's all I've no, got, see, Ford Focus. If you want the fun card names, you need to go into the hypercar territory. Mainly against me, you know, made by Zonda. <laughs> Zonda? Okay. Or, I'm not sorry, not, not Zonda, like, like, like the Pugani, like the Pugani Huayra, or the Pugani um, Zyra, or stuff like You're that. You're making everything up here. I'm pretty <laughs> sure this is not correct. Triscor, by the way, has looped? Yep, so Triz has beaten the game. So we're going... At this point, Julo Ninja would have to beat the game and get a higher score. Let me just go ahead and say that at least one of those things is not happening, and that's the score. Like, Triscor has 474,000 points, Julo Ninja has 59,000. That's pro about an eighth? <clears throat> yeah. Mr. Bond, we gave you X-ray vision to let you see people's underwear. <laughs> How do you like that, Mr. Bond? <laughs> smashing, actually. Just smashing. Doesn't really have any practical purpose. I just thought you might like it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very much so. <laughs> Bobby, it's the what drinking is the only ladies, thing that Mr. doesn't. Bond. <laughs> Drinking's the only thing that mutes the theme song in his head. <laughs> this, this is all he hears constantly. Honestly, I feel like drinking would just make this play in my head even more. Like, I, I feel like I, I would be. Yeah, I'd be in trouble. So you're gonna be minding your own business later tonight, and this is just gonna pop back in your head, and you're just gonna be humming it for the rest of the night. Well, and then and there this will is... be no reprieve for, for, for you from. And it. then this is how I'm gonna talk to Justin all night. Oh, hello, Justin. <laughs> 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 Justin, I am so sorry for the damage I have caused. <laughs> oh, it's to be expected. <laughs> you know, I've got to do some really weird stuff with my face when making that creepy voice. Like, you, you can't just sit there with a the normal voice. Like, I, I imagine, you, you know how radio DJs, they sound nothing at all like they look? Uh... But I'm like the opposite. If, I, if I'm doing a voice at all that doesn't look like me, I have to contort my face into like the worst, strangest things ever. And so, yeah, no, like I cannot do that voice and look sexy. It's just impossible. I, I look as hideous as I sound at that very moment. Then again, can I do a sexy voice? Oh, boy. <laughs> Why, hello there. I'm Bro Science and I'm here to do Cuso Grande. I hope you think this is a hot stuff. <laughs> so your sexy voice is just goofy. <laughs> My sexy voice is goofy. 
I mean, there are a few people who like that. <laughs> Look, it's either Q or it's Goofy, and you don't really have much, many other choices for sexy voice, so pick your poison, you know? Uh. <laughs> yeah, by the way, Chad, if you haven't been here for Cusa Grande before, this is kind of what happens when the game has, like, five to ten minutes of gameplay and we kind of fill the void. <laughs> and then we get this song playing eternally, forever and ever, and it never ends. And it's just here. Da -da 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 -da. But, and then they put it in a swing tune for some reason. <laughs> you know, I just want to do some... You gotta do the sexy voices. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Oh, good. There's a minute left. <laughs> We're almost done. We are so <laughs> almost done. Oh. People are asking if they can choose no poison. Not if you want me to be sexy. <laughs> Sorry, you want me yeah. to be sexy. There's, there's some. Some, something vile involved. Probably uh, the voice. There is no option this for no feels... poison. This is Kuso. This is what you get. You Honest... get poison yeah, all the time. It's poison. Non-stop poison. This is, this is how it goes. This sounds like a Seinfeld plot, though. I gotta be honest. Like, Jerry dating some girl who then he finds out her sexy voice is like, Hello there! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can see it. I don't like her sexy voice. She's got a weird sexy voice. Well, everybody. Time! <laughs> we are done. We are through the James Bond. Oh my gosh, it's different music. I no longer have to make that sound. Thank goodness! Oh, Thank you. Oh! Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is very clear that Triscor has taken the victory and Jillo Ninja has lost it. Yeah, Triscor destroyed this. Yeah, how do you feel that the players did? I, honestly, with with the slippery controls and the the music and the figuring out what to buy from the Q shop, Triscor smashed it. Corp absolutely smashed it. Yeah, and, it, was, um, it was ridiculous. I think Jillo Ninja. Hello, Jillo Ninja. Welcome. Hello. Oh my <laughs> gosh, this was this was something. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to watch the vod. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> we got a little <laughs> weird towards the end there. We were losing our. I was losing my mind. Whatever. Uh, it's put it mildly. Yeah, with that said, Jillo Ninja, uh, you were doing very well. You got down into the sea first, but Triscor managed to get down there with six extra lives and thus got through it on his first try. And that, I think, really solidified. Oh, wait, Triscor's coming. Uh, and there's Triscor. Triscor uh, got into the sea with six extra lives and managed to get all the way through the Atlantis section, uh, which is inevitably what, what gave you the victory, Triscor. Oh, I'm so bad at you, Brasenza. <laughs> Wait, you're mad at me? Why are you mad at me? I did nothing. So, I was on stage two for a long time. Because I thought I beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jillo Ninja, here's the deal. Jillo Ninja did not figure out the truck for a very long time. But then <laughs> when Jillo Ninja did, he bought the sub module and went straight into the ocean. Like, th that's some <laughs> utter BS, though, to have something like that that, like, was completely... I didn't expect it. <laughs> yeah, so I understand why you're mad, Triscor. Jilla Ninja, was was that some... Like, what were you thinking? Because I saw you driving really slow, like, occasionally shooting this truck. What was on your mind during that section? Uh, 
I figured I had to destroy the truck. <laughs> that's and what then, we thought. At some, at some point, I drove into it. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, how do I get extra lives if these coins aren't it? I think it's every one hundred thousand points you get an extra life. Uh, Wait, uh, is, yeah, two load ninja. Triscor got four hundred thousand points. And you got like fifty thousand. Like, I don't know how Triscor got such a high score. Triscor, what were you doing to get so many points? You're just driving. You were driving fast. Oh, like yeah. That might Score, actually just... make sense. Score, I mean, just considering went super high. Considering and the high. amount of loops Triscorp did on stage two, that is the, that is actually conceivable where all his points would come, all the points would come from from the the loops they did. Julo Ninja, you should have seen Triscorp was looping and looping and looping and looping. And I was just sitting there watching. <laughs> I'm like, I like I don't know if Triscorp knows that it's looping at this point, and I'm yeah, not gonna ask. You know that... Just you said, kid, kid's going, Metric. And I was like, oh, I beat the game. I'm for high school. And then <laughs> I started questioning it. Like, did I really beat the game? And I finally bought the submodel. And was like, oh, submarine? I guess I go to the ocean and check. <laughs> there, <Yeah>. was, <laughs> there was stage three. Yeah, I, ha I have to give the game credit. It, it, it is very semi-accurate to its source material where the Lotus is able to transform into a submarine, so I gotta give credit where credit's due. Yeah, have either, either of you seen the movie The Spy Who Loved Me? No, it's one of the few I haven't seen. Triscor? I've seen too many bomb films. So it's just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Julo Ninja hasn't seen enough. Triscor has seen too many. Neither of you thought of that. I haven't seen this one, so I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, yeah, this is just kind of, like, I really, really enjoyed this match, and it, it was surprising, like, Agilo Ninja, you were definitely behind for a long time, and then finally you went into the ocean and were like, what the crap, that's a lead change, and you held on to that for so long. Yeah, like, I, I didn't realize that the, uh... Uh, the green things on the queue was for the sub, so I maybe should have looped again to get all of them. Because oh, my second trip down was better. It, it definitely was better. The green things? I don't... Yeah, there, there was upgrades that were green and there were upgrades that weren't. And the green upgrades were for the submarine. Ah. It's in the, the water section where you can run into things and it gives you an upgrade to your standard shot to go from, like... Shooting forward or shooting behind to yeah, that I weird the nine way shot that was off. Yeah, I should have realized those were power ups from just any game like this, but I didn't. Yeah, so honestly, cool. like, I, I saw both of you shoot them and make them explode, and I, I was thinking, you know, that's actually pretty sophisticated for the Commodore 64 uh, to have destroyable power ups. So I was thinking maybe that wasn't a power up, but it was. Uh, I, I was completely, like, thinking the same thing while you were in the water, Jillo Ninja, that, like, these power-ups <laughs> might actually just kill you if you run into them. But then again, it had a letter on it, and a letter usually means that it's something for you. Uh, yeah. I had so many doubts. Just like that uh, one movie called Doubt. She had a lot of doubts. <laughs> Not Mrs. Doubtfire, the other one. Whatever. Shut up, everybody. <laughs> this has been my day. Uh, with that said, like, what are your overall thoughts of the game as a whole? Uh, Julo Ninja first. Uh, no, it was, it was fine. I mean, turning was kind of a pain at low speed because I really wanted the coins. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you know, sliding off a ramp and crashing was kind of fun. That was pretty good. I, I love that, like, both of you had a moment where you completely stopped your vehicle and were just sitting there like, I can't turn fast enough in order to go where I need to go. I'm going to die. Uh, one of those was Jula Ninja, I think, going into the ocean and then actually moving on to 
the next stage. One of them, mm -hmm. I think, was Triscor running into the pier with the boat. Uh, and j you just couldn't turn fast enough. I loved it. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, Triscor, what did you think of the game? Uh, I'm playing Returnal, which yeah. kind of is my mind because I'm just looping all over the place. And this is kind of the same feeling. I'm just looping. Everybody, this is uh, indeed a triple A roguelike Returnal. <laughs> 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 I love Returnal. It's so good. I, I still need to beat it, though. I, I made it into what I believe is the second half of the game, and it's so good. Uh, with that said, yeah, thank you both so much. Julo Ninja, unfortunately, you are getting eliminated from Cusa Grande today. Uh, just hit me up sometime. I can go ahead and send you a gift card over Steam. If you're not my friend already, go ahead and add me. I'm just bro sent you there, I think. I have the same icon that I have here. So add me as a friend. I can get you $10 worth of Steam games. Uh, and when Neil Breen's next movie is out, we'll also be sending that out. Uh, with that said, do you have any words for your tombstone? Uh, you know, I'm climbing to the top one tombstone at a time. <laughs> climbing to the top one tombstone at a time. Oh my gosh. I like it's it. Like, I like it. <laughs> it's like Elden Ring. <laughs> sort of. Well, I, I got one win this time in brackets. Last time I got none. So. Yeah, not, like, hey, <laughs> a little bit more, a little bit more. It's good to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with that said, are either of you doing anything exciting stream-wise these days? Uh, Triscord first, do you stream anything over on your channel? I don't. I have to play it like an uh, RPG club. We're going to play uh, Silver. Uh, PC. Play which one? Silver. I just call Silver. I don't know that. Either. No reason <laughs> name was Mola. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, hopefully that ends <laughs> up being fun. Jilla Ninja, what about you? Uh, I have I have a bunch of like boss tournaments I'm in at the moment. Ooh. So not, not much else going on besides those. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. at the very least, you have some occasional stuff uh, for Cusa Grande and then uh, Link to the Past. Like, I, I'm not part of that, but I really, like, think it's cool how many people are in it and just have a lot of fun together. Best of luck over there, and I hope that you join us next year. Oh, uh, so long as I remember sign-ups. That's why I didn't <laughs> join in sticks. Okay, well, I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to poke everybody, uh, but we'll, <laughs> we'll try to make that noticeable for everybody when we have sign-ups. Uh, yeah, Seth, anything that you're doing that people should know about? Uh, yeah, just just doing some fun stuff. Monday nights playing through Wild Arms two and. Been going through a bunch of Sierra games on Fridays, uh, playing through the 2015 episodic King's Quest at the moment. Ooh, okay, cool. So Mondays and Fridays, the big days for you. Uh, yep. Well, sweet. Everybody check out these streamers. Again, I will be away for about a week. I start, we, we drive down to Salt Lake tomorrow, and then I fly to Atlanta on Wednesday. So I'll be gone until I'm back. Probably next Tuesday, uh, if I'm feeling good enough with a don't make us board. So we'll plan on that. Let's go ahead and raid Author Blues doing some Monkey Island stuff. Do we have a good raid message, everybody? <laughs> Nothing that I said, though. Nothing. <laughs> I'm so broken. Four clips. What's Even that? The four clips being too strong or something. Forklift certified. Oh, uh, Bad Show Bond, or Bad Show Bond. Sure, that sounds good. <laughs> Go tell Author Blue's Bad Show Bond. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody, see you later. Have a great week. Take care, friends. See you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye, Jello! Bye! Bye! Bye. <laughs> <laughs>